Hello, storytellers. It's Storytelling Ron, and I'm going to talk about the carnivore diet. I am not on the carnivore diet anymore. That's it. Um, and this is a criticism of the kind of carnivore diet, but I still like the carnivore diet. I still think that you should try it for yourself, and I really do still appreciate the people that have succeeded on the carnivore diet and are doing well, so I'm very happy for them. But I feel like... Um, we need to just just reassess like the push that you're going to do. It's a panacea panacea for everything, and you're going to get better on it, even though you're suffering right now. Basically, I did it for four months, and I ended up in the ER with six joint inflammations. Um, they did the blood tests, and then they did an X-ray on my most current, recent like flare up in my wrist. And she said, the doctor came and said, you know what? I, it's just gout. You're having that, that's her assessment because I didn't, she didn't see any joint damage like rheumatoid. Arth- I, th- I thought I had rheumatoid arthritis or some autoimmune thing going on. And I was going to push through with eating beef, water, and salt. And I just progressively got worse and worse and horrifically worse in over four months. In the last month I was, I, you know, in the ER, I was on morphine and anti-inflammatory drugs. And, um, for the last four weeks, I was crippled in horrifying, torturous pain, like I was in some sort of dark, dank dungeon being tortured. Um, I was literally paralyzed in my bed. For them to get me out of bed, my wife, my son-in-law, my daughters, they lit, they had to manhandle me as I moaned and groaned like a paralyzed, tortured person. And in order to get to the bathroom to pee, I had to hold their shoulders and, and barely... When, I, when they pivoted me up from the bed, I had to wait and to hold myself as the gravity, the pain of gravity in my, my inflamed knees and feet. Um, I could accept it. It was painful. Um, so, so some things about this, um, maybe I didn't do the carnivore diet, right? Um, for, for the four months, the first month I had like a newly a honeymoon with it. It felt great. And then bam, that second month, um, torturous, achy pains in my legs, little, little a little bit of inflammation, but that hadn't yet started fully. It was just this incredible aching pain in my legs. And I think that, you know, the, there's this whole thing about oxalate dumping, which to me was a huge rabbit hole of confusion and mass hysteria. And I'm being a little negative uh, just because of my own frustration, but I, I still, and it's a very, it's a grassroots culture now, subculture on Facebook and um, YouTube. And then I think like YouTubers that are successful at this carnivore diet, they're going to float to the top. They're going to get subscribers. They're going to get, oh my gosh, this is wonderful. People like me who are, I'm done with it. We're not going to get a YouTube channel, you know, about carnivore diet. We're, I'm just going to, I'm out of here, you know? So I think it's skewed towards the ones that it really helped a lot. And then for those of us who it just became an incredibly torturous, painful experience, um, you know, we're just not going to, I'm not going to like, this probably be, you know, one of the only videos I do on it and then I'm, I'm going to move on. But I do, I just want the kind of where people to, to kind of, you know, they always say, push through, you'll get better, push through, it gets better. Um, f- for four months, I just progressively got worse. And I, 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 you know, I, six inflammations, I couldn't move, torture pain. What was going to collapse next, you know, um, in my body. So, and I, as soon as I went on regular diet, you know, kind of a keto but regular diet. You know, I might do even keto or, but as soon as I got, I started getting better, like slowly, but I could tell I was getting better. Um, there was a lot of caveats in my carnivore diet, like cheats and stuff that I did, you know, here and there. Uh, I had some wine on occasion. I had, I had a daughter's wedding. I had a big Orlando trip, uh, planned. So I kind of timed it wrong as far as, you know, when I should have done this carnivore diet. But that first month I really didn't cheat. I did have dairy, did have some eggs or eggs. I had some, I had what may have triggered it was I had two cans of sardines like over a weekend and some salmon with a little soy sauce and the sardine, one of them had mustard sauce in it and the other was like olive oil, but I wanted like the, you know, the sardine. The, so that may have triggered the second month where I was in horrific pain. Um, you know, and then, and then I did have some wine and then, and then that tapered off for the third month. So I was able to have, I did have a little bit of wine for the wedding. I had a little bit of cake, wedding cake, so sugar, but I didn't have like a trigger right after that. And then for the Orlando trip, I had wine, but I was doing a hot tub. I was still carnivore 
otherwise a lot of chicken wings because I was in a hotel. Couldn't get ribeyes or whatever. Um, but I really didn't have a huge flare up then. I had minor flare ups or whatever. And it wasn't until I got back, um, you know, in a week later, I had another convention and then, then I had a knee and then the, the last four weeks I had a knee flare and that just expanded out and continued. And I was pretty, you know, from that point on, I was like really on carnivore, but during the four month, I was pretty much on the carnivore, except, you know, I did have some cheats. So they're going to, you know, obviously, and I've gone through so many of those Facebook group comments and YouTube comments. I've read hundreds, if not thousands desperately trying to find answers. Everyone had an answer. Everyone had a, you know, do this, do that. Uh, here's the supplements. Here's the electrolytes. Here's the magnesiums. Here's the omega threes. Here's, you know, everyone had something that worked for them. So baking soda, vinegar. I mean, it was just, and I'm, I'm sort of dogging it, but I'm also, again, if it works for you, great. If you know, I'm out, you know, I'm out. Um, and, Here's another thing too. I'm going to, what's my next thing here? Uh, you know, it's not for me. I, you know, okay. So the, uh, the and then, then there was one thing where I was doing was the oxalate. Uh, another huge rabbit hole is oxalate dumping. Supposedly when you go on carnivore diet, you're not eating all the poisonous plants. And thusly your body realizes that and starts to release all the poisonous oxalate crystals. And you feel all this pain and suffering and from that. And so just add a little bit of plant or, pe- you know, black pepper or black tea and you'll feel better. I mean, that was a whole nother confusing. It was sad because there were so many of us saying we're in pain. You know, their arthritis has flared up, their joints have flared up. And then people saying, just do this, just do that. And I tried everything. I tried all this stuff and none of it worked. It just progressively got worse. Um, so I'm, you know, kind of annoyed, upset or whatever, whatever. Um, but this is like a warning to you all too. If you, I do think you should try the corner. I, I, I actually think you should try it. If you, if you feel like you're having a lot of joint inflammation or weight gain or cravings, it might help you. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm done. Um, but, uh, I do, it did uh, some benefits and gave me, which I really appreciate. Actually, I understand my sugar cravings. Now I understand my snack habits and how I need to quell that. And, and I can control that now. And I get it. I have a, I have an, a better perspective because of the carnivore diet on that. So that's, that's wonderful. I'm going to use that for the rest of my life. Uh, I also fasting is very, I did three day, I did 72 hour fasting during my painful four week thing, which was relatively easy. Um, and hoping that would do something, didn't really do anything for the inflammation. Um, but I liked it. So I'm not afraid or confused or about fasting. And I do remember a magician you know, from the magic house when I was a member, I remember him, um, he did fasting and he had one meal a day and he lost a lot of weight and that one, and he ate regular though. He was a regular diet, but he just fasted. Um, and one meal a day and he, and he would fast some days and he looked great. He totally lost all his weight and looked great. So just do that. Um, so there's that. Um, and I'm, I, I am concerned about carnivore diet, like pushing it on people who are just miserable. And I'm, I'm assuming that those people that go, have maybe my experience and you have given up on carnivore, I'm assuming they will fade out of those groups and just go away and just not talk anymore. Cause these groups are, you know, when someone, you know, me too. When you get onto some grassroots little thing, you become very defensive and zealot about it. And so you don't want to like rock the boat and everyone attacks you, you know, and that's, what's going to happen in these groups where people that say, I don't think this is a good diet. You know, there's, no, oh, you're doing it wrong. You're, you're not taking these supplements. You're not doing this right. You're not doing that right. And I'm just, that's kind of how it feels. So I'm just making this video for any of you who are suffering through carnivore diet and you're still suffering and you're still suffering. And they keep telling you to be more austere, just to be salt and water. You'll get better. Maybe you will. Maybe I could, but I can't go any further. No way. Um, I'm not doing it anymore. Anyway. And so now, and I'm going to talk now, you know, some more criticisms of the carnivore diet. And let's go to some of these images I'm going to be showing you. Um, I, I think too, the, the one comforting, comforting thing about this, uh, getting, cause I was, I was committed to carnivore diet. I was committed. I wanted to be a superhuman. I wanted to be cut and ripped and show offy and work out big and and you know I I don't know I feel now humble hum, or uh, not humiliated uh, hu- humble whatever the word is humiliate no not humiliated what's the other nice word though 
humble, humble, whatever, um, that I, I, I don't need to be this elitist superhuman, you know, person. Like if you're an athlete and you're training carnivore diet might be one of those tools in your arsenal of, of, you know, increasing your, your performance. I've never, you know, I do medieval armored combat. So that's actually the real reason why I wanted to do it. And I, I'm not a, like a hardcore competitor. I'm just sort of the, like the weekend warrior fun thing. Um, so, but I, f- I do feel like carnivore diet for me, I was being, it's like kind of like a little selfish thing where I wanted to be super human, elitist, hardcore, Oh, you know, above everybody else kind of thing, you know? So, and now that I'm way humbler now because of the experience, I think God in, I think God just, you know, nope, nope. Because my daughter, Scarlett, um, is a, um, like protege chef since she was 11. She works with a famous chef here in LA, Neil Frazier at Redbird. And she's been dedicated to it, really dedicated to it. She easily works 12 hours, um, you know, on any day that they need her. And at the restaurant, they call her plug and play because she can do every station, which is phenomenal uh, for a person, any person to do. She can do, she can do the appetizers, the middle, whatever the mushrooms and the sides or whatever though. <laughs> and then the, even at the other end, which is the grill with all the steak stuff, you know, they, they have Creekstone hardcore, big tomahawks and all that stuff. She can do that. And this is in Redbird, one of the number one restaurants here in Los Angeles. And I'll show you. Um, but I was going to deny her success because I was going to be my little selfish carnivore diet guy with who overperforms and fighting and stuff. I was going to deny my own daughter, you know, her cooking. And I, I think I, I felt comfort in that that God was like, you're going to eat your daughter's cooking. You know, I felt like, I felt like that was the only, <laughs> the only, why am I going through this to change my, to get, get myself off carnivore diet? God was going to get me off. And, you know, it's my little feeling about it all and prayer about it all. Cause boy, was I praying to God. I was in such pain, such torturous pain. Um, Oh, you know, out for hours and hours and hours, torturous pain. I couldn't even lay correctly, like to find, to stop the pain. Um, so, I, you know, I, I, and my daughter works her butt off and here I am going to not eat her food. And so let me show you my daughter's food. Okay. I'm trying to figure out if I got the right, I'm going to go through this Facebook page real quick. Sorry. I'm should have been, well, I kind of am ready, but, um, all right, let me switch over to this. She's going to be mad that I'm showing this, but whatever. So this is my daughter, a little Facebook page that I do and, you know, kind of rarely, but here she is in England. She's cutting up, you know, rabbits. That were hunted locally. Uh, you know, this is this restaurant does awful. That's like the main dish, dishes or whatever. And here she is, you know, taking a picture. I asked, I begged her to take some pictures while she was in England doing the intern, which is called staging. Um, here she is at a farm and she's actually butchering some lamb here, I think, or helping uh, butcher it. And, and then here she's at Redbird and my wife and my other daughter with her husband and me. That was when I was what back in December. Yeah. I get very fat in the winter cause I don't work out. You know, I'm not like, you know, I'm like the, I camp out in the winter and eat a lot of food and get really thick then. And then the summer I try to thin it out a bit. Um, there's, there's her, here she is touring the ants from England at the red bird. And then see here she is at the main big dish doing this flounder thing. Um, here's her, one of her Japanese knives she got from the chef as, or one of the chefs as a gift. See, this is what she does. If you can see that, uh, it's kind of small on the screen there. Maybe I should zoom it in, but whatever. Let me see. Can we go bigger? Oh, there we go. Okay, so there's that. You know, like that's what she cooks. Um, you know, and I'm gonna deny. You know, going on the carnivore di- diet, I'm gonna deny this kind of food that she makes. This is her, her, her at home stuff she's made. This is her getting burned. You know, just little burns here and there. All the, she hasn't got any recently, but. She just gets to work. Um, this is, you know, look at this. This is like Korean style stuff that she did or Asian style. Look at that, man. Look at that. Oh, she did this for some dude. Um, some super rich dude. Anyway, so she did that. You know, these are things that she made. And she's 19. I think she did this when she was 17 or 18 or whatever, 22 last year. So 
18. Um, I asked her for just sort of like a Frenchy home style cooking something. Salmon, you know, this is what she made. So this is at her, the restaurant, Redbird. Okay, so there's that. And look at this. So if you're on the carnivore diet, you're going to deny yourself the pleasures of life. These are the pleasures of life that we all, that you're denying because you know, because you're suffering, because you're suffering. You have arthritis, flare ups, whatever it is. But is carnivore diet really a solution? And I'm going to get to that in a minute, but this is humanity. We're talking about the joy of humanity is this kind of food. And this is Italian because I like Italian and then Korean. This is, you know, I'm half Korean. I love Korean food, kimchi, bulgogi. And look at this. Now in Asia, they don't have, the old people don't have rheumatoid arthritis or all these issues that we have here in America. So I'm going to get to that in a minute and look what they're eating. We have, I think the notion that carnivore diet is curing us of all these things is a false notion. It's a half truth. I think it does help and cure, but that doesn't mean the cause of it is this kind of food. This is not the kind of food that's the cause. So you're denying, and I'm, I'm going to make some points here, but you're denying the joy of flavors because you think that this is what's causing your problems and this is not what's causing your problems. Um, and let me just um, go back to me. because I'll, um, the, sorry, I've got a couple of screens here. Okay. Um, so a couple of guys that Sean Baker and Anthony Chaffee, the, the two doctor guys, I, and I, I appreciate what they're doing. I really do. I really appreciate their perspective. Um, but I'm, I'm saying we need to tamp that down a little. I think it's getting a little too, too far, a little too zealot because first off, both of them were professional rugby players, so they know how to work out. I mean, they have been working out just by that. They've been working out. They don't drink, neither drinks and neither really eat sugar. So right there, right there, you're, you're going to be better off. You know, you're going to be a built dude and healthy right there without even a carnivore diet. You're just going to be that way. If you're just eating home, you know, regular food and you're working out like they do, because I mean, they work out hardcore. I know Shafi says he doesn't work out all the time, but he's a surgeon, right? And I'm assuming him and, and, and Baker both are on their feet a lot. Europeans and Asians walk a lot. We Americans don't. We Americans, you know, we're spread out. We drive everywhere. And then the, the only walking we do is from the car to the place and back to the, you know, and then, and then we fill up on diner food and then we go back to the car. We don't walk that much here. Um, but in Europe and London, you know, I've been to London and everyone's walking everywhere. You know, they get on the subway and they get off and they got to walk 10 blocks or whatever every day. And they don't have the same issues we have here. I don't think the carnivore diet is going to explode in Europe. You know, they'd be like, why? You know, another thing, they don't have corn syrup. They don't have corn syrup. They don't have corn syrup and they don't have corn syrup. They don't, they don't have all the preservatives. Their food is much closer from the farm to their table, much closer. Ours, you know, are all trucked in from mass corporate farming facilities and they're all creating wheat that here in America, that is way worse than, and than, than Europe. I mean, and I've had so many anecdotal things from the daughter, from the wife, how people go to Europe and Italy and they eat the noodles and they don't have, you know, here, here in America, they cannot eat any of this, but in, in, when they go to Europe, everything they eat doesn't bother them. They don't have the, the reactions, the autoimmune, you know, the allergies that we have here in America. Um, you know, all of our freaking wheat is, is genetically modified. It's modified to be fatter and more of the white, you know, more of the carbs and sugars in it. And it's genetically modified to, to resist bugs. Bugs don't even want to eat the crops, the food we make here. Bugs, don't, you know, bugs are like, ah, that's going to make me fat. I don't want that. You know, so I feel like you're, we, you know, in a carnivore diet, you're actually denying yourself wonderful foods that don't hurt you and you know you're getting better but at, you know you're you're losing out on this kind of food is, is part of our, our of our experience i mean incredible part you know i you know when i was in my four week paralyzed state on youtube i i i was watching one thing i watched was the 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 the, the preparation of food on submarines and ships you know and and, and boot camps and how 
they knew, and on regular ships, like tanker ships, these chefs and cooks or cooks knew that food was so important to the, to the guys, to the workers or to the soldiers. And that giving them a good meal was such a morale booster, you know? So think about that. Like think about the one food every day, you know, it's just a wonderful morale booster. You know, God made, I can, you know, God made food for us. Now I'm going to, now I'm going to go into this. Um, Chaffee has a video where he says plants are killing us. And that was a very convincing video to me. I was like, Oh, okay. That's really interesting. That's, but it's a half truth. It's a half truth that plants are kill, trying to kill us, right? Cause 90, we can't, 99% of plants that we can't eat are poisonous to us. And the few that we can't eat, are they safe? You know, that's his, his argument. Okay. And you're like, Oh yeah, that makes sense. You know, the plants that we eat, are they really safe? Are they giving us oxalates and crystals and, and, and deteriorating our bodies cause we're eating them. Um, I, 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 I want to bring up, uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring this up here just to get it over with. Sally K Norton is another one who does the oxalate thing. And I, I'm a little annoyed by her now. Um, I hope she, I hope she gets it right, figures it out, whatever. But ve- she's very vague. I didn't, I ever bought her book, so I don't know. But when I, when I went through all the YouTubes finding her, I, I, you know, the, all these answers were vague and, and she's very vague and very, this can cause this and that can cause this, but we don't really know. Maybe this is good. And oxalate crystals are in you and we detect them. So they're definitely there. So you, that, that's why you're having all these issues and we need more studies. You know, that's the kind of stuff I got out of her and I was really, everyone loves her. And I'm like, what, I, what, you know, and she's like really healthy looking, but it turns out she does hot yoga three times a week. She does some cold plunge. She's like, has all this regimens of workouts anyway that, you know, she kind of brings up in some of the YouTube two videos and she even eats carbs once in a while, like, like three days in a row, she had fried rice or something, you know? So I, I couldn't, you know, I'm a, I'm a little testy on that one, on her and, and her videos. And I'm not, you know, so she, cause she's part of the whole Oxley dumping culture. That's, that's, that's another branch of carnivore diet that I found confusing anyway. So concerning plants, plants are killing you. You know, see, so she obviously says that. And Chaffee says that. Plants are killing you. Okay. All right. Here's my retort to that response to that as just a goofy layman. And this is, and, this, and biblically too, this makes sense. I'll get to that. Plants are trying to kill us, right? They're, they're, they're poisonous to us. All right. So let me tell you what else is trying to kill us. Water. Water is trying to kill us. If you drink too much water, literally, if you drink too much water, you'll die. You can die from it. If you have too much water, you'll drown. You'll die. Okay, just 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 to hear. Water is trying to kill us. You know what else is trying to kill us? Air. Air is trying to kill us. If <laughs> CO2, if you have too, too much CO2, not enough oxygen, you have too much oxygen. If you have too much oxygen, it'll kill you. Get some nitrogen in there. Uh, what else is trying to kill us? RNA. You know what RNA is? That's another video I'm going to do. RNA is what we spew out all the time. And my wife gets my RNA, I get her RNA, my daughter's RNA, I get her, my dog's RNA, my, the pig's RNA, the chicken's RNA. You get where I'm going with this? Viruses is just RNAs. RNAs is our bodies constantly shooting out to communicate. The cells are communicating with each other's RNA. I'll go to another video on this. But we all think viruses are some foreign object. No, viruses are created by us. And we're throwing them out there. And pigs are creating their own. They're throwing them out there. And we get a pig flu or whatever. Um... So RNAs, which we create, are starting to kill us. Our own immune system can kill us. We have another mechanism there that tampers it down. We have 70 plus hormones in us that all have to be in balance. I guess because they're randomly created by evolution. Uh, But we have 70 different hormones in us that all have to be in balance. And if one of them is not in balance, it'll kill you. Our liver can kill us. If our liver leaks out, it can kill us. Um, If you have... No living organism. Okay, so Earth is the most life-sustaining Earth, or the only life-sustaining planet. That's what God made. He said the rest of the universe was not meant for us. It's meant for his glory, not for us. So don't be confused there, but the scientists tell you, you know, Earth is the only place for us. But only God can create life. We cannot create life. We can continue life or whatever. but We cannot create life from nothing. Only God can. And that is 
pr total proof of that here on Earth. We've never seen life create itself. We've only seen life come from life. And we cannot survive in the, in, on Earth if, if we are exposed to Earth. Earth, this Earth, our Earth that we can live in is killing us. You cannot be exposed to this Earth or you will die. I mean, you will eventually die. Exposure in the sense of being naked out in the wilderness will kill you. Or having a having any kind of opening that is not you know filtered carefully by the by your by your body, but if you have any opening that is not supposed to be there, you will die. Whether it's from a bacteria, a virus. Let's say there's no bacteria in the, in the area, or viruses, or not a virus. Virus is more true, but a bacteria. But let's just say um, uh, there's no bacteria. Even just the raw elements will kill you if you have any. If your body, your you know, if your innards are exposed to the so. For, so for Chaffee to say plants are trying to kill us is a half truth because everything is trying to kill us. Everything. Um, can you eat too much beef? Yeah, right. If you eat too much beef, it'll kill you. Okay, so there's that point issue. Um, and again, people in Europe and Asia do not have the same horrible late later in life conditions that we here in America do. They don't have the obesity obesity problems we do here. Um, and God says that we're only going to reach 120, but really, so, so 90, 80, 90 and ja Japan has the highest, um, age and health rate too, at, at older ages of 85. And, um, they, you know, they don't have a carnivore diet. And then that's another thing that, that, um, Baker and Chappie try to try to get it, you know, sell you on is that, the, uh, people on a carnivore diet are going to live longer and be healthier. I don't, you know, and they, and they even brought up the Inuits, the Eskimos, they brought up the, the, the Eskimos and, um, um, I, their, their lifespan is not very long. They're actually worse. You know, they say, well, because of their diets today, but in the past, I don't recall, you know, them or, and I read up on ancient Roman history of warriors and ancient history of, 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 of armies and battles, you know, I'm all into medieval history, medieval battles and, or whatever military. But, um, I've never heard of a tribe who in, who figured out that if they just feed their, their soldiers carnivore, that they're going to kick ass or kick butt. I've never read anything like that. Like the Roman soldiers, the Romans, they would have known if you just feed our, if we just feed them lamb and they go out there and kick butt till they're 65, they would have done it, right? They would have done it, but I've never heard of that. Never heard of that. Uh, the Roman soldier... They always use the they always use the young ones in the front and the older ones in the back. Uh, I've, so I've never heard of a carnivore diet tribe kicking butt. Not even the um, the the Mongols. The Mongols came across Europe and kicked butt uh, on Poland and Hungary, right? Initially, but then the following decade, they came, they returned, got their butts kicked by the Poles and Hungar Hung Hungarians because they had prepared. Um, so I, I, I don't see a carnivore class of people that have excelled in history. You know, so there's that. Um, and again, with Baker and Chaffee, they're just, you know, they're, they're, they're doing great. Fine. Um, okay. So, but I, you know, again, never seen a fat surgeon doctor, you know, and I've had a couple, I've had a few, so they've always looked healthy to me. Um, Okay, and then, and then my last thing here is, and this is this one's kind of irking me um, as well, is ribeye. They always tell you, eat ribeye, eat ribeye, eat ribeye. And I find that very, and I'm going to be a little mean here, but anyway, you know, but I still appreciate people that are doing the carnivore diet. Um, that is very elitist. Eat only ribeye. Very elitist. I want to say fascist just to be mean, but it's, it's, it's elitist um, because it's pathetic. It's pathetic. Think about it. Is that a sustainable li lifestyle? Eat only ribeye? I mean, you know, they eat other things too, but they primarily eat ribeye and try to eat two or three a day, right? I mean, huge ones. Um, okay, Let, let's play that out. You're, you're promoting carnivore diet. A hundred people around you are now doing what you do. So when you go to Costco or Publix or whatever grocery store you're going to and you... You got to buy up all the ribeye. You hundred, a hundred carnivores buying up all the ribeye. What kind of a life is that? What kind of a neighborhood 
would that be like to live in? I and my family on Easter want to have a rib roast. Nope. All the carnivores are going there and buying up all the ribeye. Uh, you know, the rest of the cow? Yeah, just get rid of that. You guys can have that. We're going to get that little piece right there on the back there. And that's ours. Because we're, we're superhuman elitists. And we deserve the ribeye, you know? And I've seen on the uh, Facebook pages where they, you know, they go to in Florida, like in Publix grocery stores uh, at Easter, they buy up all the ribeyes. They got their little plastic bags full of ribeyes and they take pictures of it and post it on there. And everyone's posting on there bragging about how they went to five or six Publixes around their, their neighborhood and bought up all the ribeye. And so me and all of us regular people who would like to have a rib roast for Easter. Nope. Can't have it. Because these, these carnivores need their superhuman diet that makes them superhuman. You know, you got to get off that. You definitely got to get off that. If you, you eat your ribeye and then you eat the rest of the cow, eat the rest of the cow. You cannot have a tribe where everyone just eats ribeye. That is ridiculous. That's utterly, that, that end result is utterly ridiculous for you guys and for me and for the rest of us. Uh, ribeye should be enjoyed by everybody. Um, if you have, if you, if your diet requires you to eat ribeye, there's a problem in your diet, in your health. Um, also, yeah, I remember too, in my pain and suffering, like you gotta, you gotta stick with beef only salt, you know, and if you get off of it, you're going to have all these problems. What kind of a diet is that? What kind of a diet is it where you paint yourself in a corner and then if you go off of that, you're going to have aches and pains and suffer the consequence. What kind, what kind of a diet is that? I am, I am happy that, that some of you, um, are feeling way better on this diet. I don't think it's a lifestyle choice. I don't think it's something you should be doing permanently. I do think you should, you need to go through and figure out your, you know, you need to be able to eat other foods. Your body can handle it. The problem isn't these other foods. And that's the problem. I think carnivore diet. This is not the problem. Asians are not suffering with rheumatoid arthritis or with arthritis or obesity. Okay. They're not, they're living their simple little lives. I mean, they got other problems, but as far as their health and over the age of 60, 70, we're all going to have problems. Just naturally, we're going to have problems. Even if you're on a carbon diet. Um, I get that you want to be healthy and you want to, you know, do, do these things, but that's not sustainable for a society. All eating ribeyes, that is ridiculous. You know, if, if you play that out, that is ridiculous. You have got to get other foods in you. and You've got, you know, this is like the survival of mankind. God, and God has provided this food. Now, I'm going to go a little biblical here and then I'll end this. God does, God did curse the ground. I mean, it says in the Bible, he cursed the ground. He wanted, he wanted us to work for our food, you know, because Adam and Eve were lazy and screwed up. He also killed animals. He was the first, God was the first one to kill animals. And gave it to Adam and Eve as, as clothing. Now, they didn't necessarily eat the food, meat. Because they probably did, but um, probably didn't. You know, we don't know for sure, but I'm sure that that was an option for them. But there was so much um, food. They, they, they could cultivate so many different things. He also says that he put a thorn in the side of man uh, from, from the land or whatever. So that we had thorns. So that, in other words, we had irritations, rashes, things, things that the plants would bother us. And post-flood the plants became more stressful. Plants are stressed out. They're stressed out because of the cycle of, of weather. They got to hurry up and do their thing. Um, so there is, there is that aspect of plants. So thusly we have to cultivate and work at getting the right ones to eat. And that is what the Bible says we have to do. It says that for that. It also says we need to eat meat and we should eat lots of meat because, um, they, for the Hebrews and the Jews, they, um, they did a lot of animal sacrifices, which was barbecues, basically. It was barbecues with the priests. And so you have, uh, you sit down and you break bread together, you know, and, and you talk with the priest. You know, it's a festival. It's an event. But it's also a learning experience for the, the people. And, and when they do sacrifice, they're f confessing whatever bad things they've done and then talking to the priests and, and, ha and eating and having it over a meal. And that was the animal sacrifice. So they were eating plenty of meat. But they also had breads. They did when they could. They could. They farmed. Um, so these things are not bad for us. They're not trying to kill us. Not any more than water or air or our own RNA is, um, our own cells are trying to kill us. 
our own, you know, so there, this stuff is okay. Uh, that's my layman's bro science view of it all and experience that the carnivore diet is going too far. It's selling a panacea, which is not good and it's not sustainable and eating only ribeye is an elitist twatty thing to do to say, if you can't eat the whole cow that then you're an elitist and you're ridiculous. And if your health uh, 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 fails because of it, there's something wrong with you. And like Jordan Peterson and Mikhail, they're, they're, they're all on the ribeye and they, they've gotten way better. But think about this. They've been, they were all on drugs, therapy drugs and, and all this and doing all kinds of weird stuff. So they're coming from a really whack position anyway, you know? Um, so I, you know, I don't want to get into it too much, but I just feel like, um, it's getting a little too zealot and a little too cure all. And we're getting, you know, I was sold on that. I was sold on that and I'm not gonna do it anymore. I'm not sold. Thank, I know God, ugh, he really hurt me. He really went after me and got me out of it. There was no way I would have gotten out of it. Cause I really wanted that panacea. I wanted to be an elitist. I wanted to be a tr- superhuman, uh, you know, and God said, Nope, you're out. So now I'm going to have to eat my wonderful daughter's cooking. Um, oh, well, I was going to do this one last thing about Redbird and I'm going to enjoy life and you know, I'm going to moderation, moderation. I'm not going to go crazy. You know, that's another thing. I'm going to fast. I'm going to do moderation. I'm not going to, you know, go crazy. That's, that's really the main thing. So here's my daughter's Redbird where she works. Um, and you know, just look at all the foods and wonderful stuff. I'm just kind of focusing on the food part here. This is the stuff that she kind of works on and does, um, there, you know, I don't know what, which one specifically, but she can certainly do all these dishes. Okay. So, and they have a really cool, incredible space. Um, like this, you know, she works here at the parties. She does the, the, the as a, the chef for the different little parties they have in the different little rooms. Um, uh, not concerned about the married thing there. Uh, this is like outdoors, you know, they got space outdoors. It's pretty incredible. They, 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 it's an old, it's an old cathedral. So they have all kinds of different, um, they have the cathedral space. They have the monasteries up in there. They have the executive kitchen chef areas. Uh, they have an outdoor area. So it's really like this incredible space. They got an outdoor pizza oven in the, in the, in the courtyard. Oh, here's Neil Frazier doing, they even have these, um, um, ex- you know, like I said, kitchens totally built by the kitchen aid or whoever. And a few times I've been there, they've, they've always been like a representative. They're like, you know, I don't know, checking it out, making sure the kitchens are all up and running. Uh, so it's, it's an incredible thing that they've built there. And, um, you know, my daughter's, um, there, she's been there since she was 11. Um, and I was, I, well, there's a, what's his name? Um, but I, 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 you know, and I'm, I'm going to deny that I'm going to deny being the father of that daughter and denying her that God said no. <laughs> so, but I am just grateful now that I've been eating regularly. I've been having a little bit of desserts, you know, a little sugar, but I, I, I get the sugar cravings. I'm going to control that. And I understand it better now. I mean, I had a glass of wine or have a bottle of really wonderful wine last night and no flare ups or aches or anything today. Um, I had it with, I had it with actually Creek stone ribeye and New York strips. So I, that was my first beef since, uh, since I stopped doing carnivore and I don't know, I feel fine. Um, slowly getting out of my aches and pains though, from, from all that I was trying to do. Anyway, I know it's a long video, but I just, this, I just wanted to do it one time and, you know, I'll probably not talk about carnivore diet anymore. Um, but again, I think it's, you know, and I may do like a carnivore diet thing where I do it for just a month just to, you know, cleanse or whatever, but I'm not going to, it's not going to be, it's not a lifestyle. And I do feel that people that have choose, chosen as a lifestyle, they're missing out. And it's, I'm sure it helps them. And I, I, I know it helps them, but it isn't the only thing. It's just, you, I, I bet the real reason is that it, it helped you get away from the sugars and the corn syrups and all that. That's what it did. It helped you get away from all that stuff in the American diet that we've all been sort of fooled into as well. Okay. So that whew, long video, I just wanted to, get it all out there about my, what I've been going through and my brain fog is lifting. I'm feeling better. I'm drinking coffee cause I enjoy coffee and I'm going to be, so, and that helps me in the morning, get my juices flowing. Just, this is my thing. Uh, all right, that's it. I, 
think I've said enough about that. And uh, remember, in the game of life, roll holy dice.